Okay, what if I went back 25 years? Would I actually be missing something? I'm about to edit an entire YouTube video on a computer that's older than YouTube itself. And by the end, you might question some things you think you know about progress. This is the iMac G3 from 2001. When Steve Jobs unveiled this machine, it literally saved Apple from bankruptcy. It was revolutionary. Translucent colors, built-in everything. And it made computing feel friendly, personal. But walk into any electronic store today and they will tell you this is a piece of junk, e-waste, garbage, something that belongs on a landfill. When I was a small boy, eight years old, this used to be a second-hand computer store. And I remember staring at the window, thinking I can never afford it. Now I have one and the world's telling me it's worthless. I don't accept that. So, here's what we're going to do. Let's make it useful again. Because I saw this ad and it shows an iMac editing a video. And I was like, it's way too old for video. But maybe I was wrong. And maybe it isn't obsolete. So I'm not buying a new shiny computer for this channel. I'm using this one and think a little different, okay? The rules are simple, only use this iMac. And then I will prove to you that this is perfect for video editing. But first, let's give this machine its best shot. Let's open it up and get some upgrades. This one, it's built to be easily upgradable and that's kinda also needed. Can you imagine a time where 128 megabytes of memory was just enough? The good thing, this stuff is very cheap nowadays. So I can build an iMac that would have cost thousands of euros 25 years ago in my childhood's dream. But it also has limits. The 500 megahertz processor is just not upgradable. And it's also not the point to make it modern anyway. We want to edit this video like it's 2001 again. Let's have some fun. The upgrade, it's nice, but it's still old and always will be. But I would say it's now the best possible version it could ever be. But can I edit video on it? like a real good-looking video, I have reasons to believe that this might not work at all so well. Here's why. At that time, phones looked like this and there was no iPod yet, so music looked like this and video equipment looked like this. Just massive, heavy and complex machines this is a 1 inch C standard videotape machine from Sony I uh, for some reason own. And this whole thing is only one video recorder. And only one piece out of many needed to edit a video. And it's really expensive. It's hard to find numbers, but in this preserved PDF it reads that these 1 inch machines were sold from 20,000 US dollars up to 60,000 US dollars. In today's money, 78,000 US dollars. And that's for one professional videotape recorder only. Only one. But to edit a video, you'd want at least three of these. If you're interested in a video about these machines, just leave a comment. I think they are very interesting. So when someone in the year 2000 this ad came around, you may start to see why this was a game changer. Having all of this in this compact iMac was just a giant leap forward at the time. But the question is, 
as it was somehow the first generation. Was it maybe really bad if it would have been great? We would still be using it today. Or would we? I have managed to get macOS Tiger running and just look at this gorgeous design. This interface is so simple and clean, it gets almost completely out of your way. And guess what? No notifications, because they haven't been invented yet. This computer has never been asked to rate an app or update its privacy settings or been reminded of 200 new messages in a Slack group. It's living in blissful ignorance. And it looks familiar, right? That's because we're still using the same concepts today. The interface might be glossier now, also noisier, but we're doing the same things we were doing 25 years ago. The tools, they haven't really changed. They've just gotten louder. Look at that, I've got some older version of Ableton Live for music production and, or maybe editing podcasts. I've also got Adobe After Effects and Photoshop and Adobe Premiere, which is as bad as always. It crashes when saving a project, which is almost like in 2025. Yep. There it goes, 25 years and three corporate acquisitions later. And Adobe seems to have found the one feature that's worth preserving, a crash. But we, we have something better, Final Cut Pro 3.0. This is it, this is our weapon. Rock solid, beautiful interface. This is what we're going to use to edit this video. And it even feels familiar. If you know a modern editing application, you just also notice. The concept is the same as ever. Let's go. Unless, okay, this iMac can't even play HD video footage. So we need to transcode everything to standard definition, the DV codec. This is what this machine was built for and what we saw on the Apple ad. Basically, it's just JPEGs at 25 megabits per second. And that makes it very easy to edit because every single frame is self-contained. So DV is simple and dump, beautifully, reliably dump. It's like a golden retriever. It does one thing, and it's always happy to do it. So before we start editing, we need to get our footage into DV format first, using only this iMac. You can't use modern software on this machine. And I think at this point I would be lost in this project if there weren't people who still care about this platform. He's called um, Alex3 on GitHub and uh, he saved me. He built a program called PowerPC Media Center. You can use it to download YouTube videos, but it's a modern software. And inside of it, there's a modern version of FFmpeg. And FFmpeg is the greatest tool ever. It's used nearly everywhere to transcode media files. And as it is available inside there, I can use it. In theory, we just Grab the binary and start transcoding to DV. Okay, check one, two. I think I have a problem. Um, I just went for a walk because I tried to transcode the HD footage on the iMac and it literally takes forever. I mean, there's this great person who compiled FFmpeg for PowerPC architecture. And this means I can have a modern um, transcoder running on this iMac. But it only gets 1.2 frames per second. It, it, it's just not feasible. So I'm wondering if this might be a fail. Maybe I've hit a wall where obsolete 
actually means something. This is perfect for me to edit. Okay, five minutes later, future me here, sun comes out and I have an idea. I remembered something. This machine, it wasn't made for HD. It was made for DV, digital video, standard definition. And I shouldn't be forcing it to do something it was not made to do. I should just get an old camera. It will be awesome. Buying stuff secondhand for cheap that once cost 2,500 euros. It's just the best. Same tech, same features, same fun, but almost for free. What have we got? The Sony HC-1E from 2005. It was one of the first camcorders to also record in HD. Oh, zoom! Great. There is a digital master tape. Wow, this looks so professional. Mini DV. There's something on it. What is it? Seriously, guys, if you if you sell your camera, just delete your videos, delete the tape, please. Seriously. I can't stop laughing. But the camera, it's great. Huh? Looks good. Camcorders are just so much fun. The zoom, the zoom! And the transfer to the iMac, it just works. Just plug in the FireWire, the Mac knows exactly what to do with it. It's so simple, you just see everything that the camera sees on the screen and you can hit record and it's done. And camcorders, they are a bit like iPods. Everybody has iPods again. Through an iPod. 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 iPods. iPod. Oh my God! And also everybody has camcorders again. I was at the lake the other day with my friends and I took the camcorder with me and it was just perfect to capture the day. It was so much fun. And suddenly I was not fighting the iMac anymore. I was just working with it. And you know what? This is actually kind of magical. No cloud sync failures, no notifications, just pure creativity. This machine isn't asking for my attention every five seconds. It's just letting me work. When did we decide that constant interruption was an improvement? And yeah, it's not perfect, of course it's not. Sometimes it takes forever to render something and the internet doesn't work, um, browsers are not supported anymore. But actually, that's also a feature. We have made everything more complicated and called that progress. But what if progress isn't about having more options? What if it's about having better ones. You know what? <laughs> I didn't expect it actually to work, but I just hit export and the whole video you're watching right now is edited and produced on a 25-year-old iMac. And it worked! I can't believe it! And the most important thing, I had fun! And I think tech should always be fun. You know, this video, it isn't really about computers. It's about the feeling when you find an old recipe written by your mother by hand and it tastes better than everything you can order on an app. The stories we tell and the connections we make and the, the, the things we create, they don't get better because our tools get better. They get better because we remember why we are telling them in the first place. Thank you so much for watching. 
this was my first video on YouTube and I'm still very curious where this goes. I do appreciate your support and for now, um, see you soon.